guys, Dr. John Russin here, and I want to review a big misconception that people have with the hip hinge and the deadlift pattern. What ends up happening is people squat their hip hinges and they hip hinge their squats. So we're going to show Lindsay doing like one of these tweener movements that usually comes with the deadlift, the squat, and the kettlebell swing. So Lindsay's going to go from the side here, and again, this is going to be a bad demonstration, a bad rep. She's going to go down, and you'll notice that she keeps on bending her knees as her torso comes down towards the ground. So this is a tweener rep, let's come back up. So the big differentiation between a squat pattern and a hip hinge pattern is where the majority of the motion comes from. So we're gonna go through a squat pattern here and I want you to key in on Lindsay's knee position. So Lindsay's gonna go down slowly here with a neutral spinal position. And you can see that a majority of the motion is happening and is articulating at the knee joint. Obviously there are ranges of motion happening at the torso and the hips, but the majority are happening from the knee. Let's come back up. And let's look at a hip hinge pattern. So Lindsay's gonna go through an RDL based pattern. And I really want you to focus in here on the hips leading the motion. So as Lindsay hinges over, her spine stays in a neutral position, her knees get into a slightly flexed position and then maintain their position as the majority of the motion happens from the hips. Let's come back up. That's the biggest differentiating factor between a hip hinge or a deadlift pattern and the squat pattern. But just make sure that we're not hip hinging our squats.